This is Talking Drupal, a weekly chat about web design and development from a group of guys with one thing in common. We love Drupal. This is episode 423, Conflict Resolution Team. On today's show, we're talking about the Conflict Resolution Team, what they do and why they do it with guest Mark Casillas. We'll also cover Smart Trim as our module of the week. What a great module. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Drupal. Our guest today is Mark Casillas. He lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, plays ice hockey. He's in a band called The Random Addicts, and Mark has been developing and maintaining Drupal sites for over 12 years. He is Marky, M-A-R-K-I-E, on Drupal.org. Mark, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us for the last four weeks. Hey, no, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun uh, doing the guest hosting and uh, chatting with you all about this great thing. Awesome. I'm Nick Laughlin, founder at Enlightened Development, and today my co-hosts are... John Bacosi, Solution Architect at EPAM. Howdy, partners. <laughs> For those of you that don't know or aren't looking, I am wearing a cowboy hat and a uh, shirt that could be construed as as uh, cowboy attire. Uh, uh, today is Halloween in, well, everywhere, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so I wore my Halloween costume. And now to talk about our module of the week, let's turn it over to Martin Anderson Klutz, a senior solutions engineer at Acquia and maintainer of a number of Drupal modules of his own. Martin, we have for us this week. Thanks, Nick. Have you ever wanted to truncate provided user text in a more intelligent way than the summary or trimmed formatter in Drupal core? There's a module for that. It's called Smart Trim, and it was originally created in April of 2012, so it's been around for quite a while has 7.x-1.6 and 2.1.0 versions available, the latter of which is compatible with Drupal 8, 9, and 10. It is actively maintained. It has 74 open issues, eight of which are active bugs against the 2.x branch. It does have test coverage using the new GitLab CI, and it has a user guide for documentation. It's currently in use by 66,919 sites, according to Drupal.org. And its current maintainers are friends of the podcast, Marky, Ultimike, and Volkswagen Chick, uh, the first of which is our uh, co-host on the show today. Yep. Now, the mod... <laughs> That's right. The module works by adding a variety of configuration options in addition to the trim length. So whether the length is in characters or words... It provides an optional suffix at the end of the trim point. So you can add, you know, ellipsis or whatever works best for you. You can decide whether or not to add a more link after the trim text. You can optionally strip HTML tags from the trimmed output. And in the newest version, you have the ability to customize the output even more by overriding a twig template. Now, because it works by providing a field formatter, it works with not only entities, displays, but also with views, layout builder, and more. It's a module that I've used many times myself and found extremely useful. I haven't personally had a chance to try the latest release, but given the recent focus on UI improvements, documentation, and flexibility via the Twig template, it should be even better than I remember. So let's talk about Smart Trim. Yeah, it's a module. It was created uh, actually by Jay Senich when I was working at a company called Mu Signature way back in the day. Uh, but I just took it and contributed it to the Drupal community because it was so well you or it just made sense because so many people were getting things trimmed and there was trimming in the middle of the HTML. So that was breaking everything. Uh, it was trimming halfway through the word. So that was making everything lo uh, look ugly. Uh, the more link wasn't showing up, stuff like that. So we just kept adding features, adding features. Uh, it started in 6.x, actually. Um, and then we moved it to 7.x. We stopped supporting the 6.x branch. Um, and then technically, the 7.x branch is there and the 7.x version is there, but uh, it's not really anything that we're working on. We're wor working on more towards... Uh, the, the, the 2.1 version right now. Um, we're trying to put more things into the, uh, into the uh, Twig file. Um, I actually, I've got a version or a branch locally that it's using the single directory component, which means it's only going to be supported for 10.1 and above. Um, and then, 
you know, that way we can get some of those configurations, like what, how they want to add classes and stuff like that. You do that in the twig file or in the component instead of this big, long laundry list of configuration that you got to keep track of. So that's that's the future. Uh, big thanks to Ultimike and uh, and James uh, Shields, uh, who's been doing a lot of really good work lately on that documentation. Uh, Amy June, uh, Volkswagen chick, uh, has been uh, killing it on the documentation and uh, getting a lot of movement on it lately. And J just want to say thanks to James for being a longtime patron as well of the show. So nice to see him pop it up here as well. Yeah. Question, just because I, I am uh, vaguely familiar with the uh, core trim functionality, right? The sum summary and trim functionality. Um, what does core do out of the box, right? It does it just <laughs> it just trims to a certain set character of characters, count. And, character and count, like including HTML. Yeah, yep. character count, including HTML. <laughs> Oh, so it's not even visible characters. It's like Incorrect. whatever whatever the characters are in the blob that it gets. I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The, so the reason that came, one of the reasons that came about is we were working on a site that had a URL, uh, you know, everything, the first thing was a link. And then the URL was 100 characters. So we would say trim 100 characters um, and, and it would break everything. Everything would be broken. Uh, right. it, it was very annoying. So that's the one thing Smart Trim does is it it counts, you know, it can strip the HTML, but also it counts outside the HTML. So it removes the HTML, counts characters, says, okay, here it is, and then puts it back in um, if you want the HTML back mm. in. So, and that's hmm. the big okay. difference. So it's faster so, to do that than just render it and count where it would get to that way. That's interesting. Well, I... It might it might do that. I can't remember to be honest with you, but it, it does it outside the HTML is the point. It doesn't count the HTML as part of its characters count. Okay, it's one of those scenarios where now in my head I'm like, well, why isn't Smart Trim part of Core? Why doesn't Core just do what Smart Trim is doing because it's better than what Core is doing natively? Um, I mean, uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. You know, maybe at creating an issue on the for. Uh, on the uh, trim format, summary trim formatter. Um, one of the things that Smart Trim also does is if you actually, uh, there are a lot of things like newspapers and stuff that want to write their own summary. They don't want to trim it. So if you write your own summary, you have the option of that's what's going to be shown no matter what, whether it's trimmed or not. So that's actually the first option um, oh, is right. if there's a summary okay. present, then keep it. Now, the problem with that is now Core automatically says, okay, well, there's a summary which is the first paragraph of, of your uh, body. So there's always going to be a summary. So you can actually, you hmm. actually have to set to say, no, follow the trim settings instead. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Yeah. So, okay. I guess I can, I can understand that. Um, so, but that being one... said, why, why, when it does trim, why does it count the HTML? Well, right. That's, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's definitely one that they should work at. So I've used summary before, sure. like, I think that's, that's still valuable, but like, okay. So then like, let's, let's summary and smart trim as opposed to just dumb. Well, that's not nice, but dumb trim. Yeah. Simple. Just let's not average simple. trim, not, not dumb trim, average trim. Simple, not simple smart. Trim. It's not dumb. Simple it's trim. Oh. Yes. There we go. I mean, come on. It's oh. counting HTML, Nick. That's not simple. That's like <laughs> annoying. Um, um, what were you going to say? Martin? Anyway. Well, so they, I, I think the maybe higher level question I wanted to, to just ask about uh, Smart Trim, I feel like the use case that it's designed for is really sort of, you've got a co content architecture where you're listing out, you know, teasers or something like that. And it's probably been designed to show a certain number of characters and, you know, the, the way the core, um, you know, body fields tend to work is there's that optional summary that we know, you know, 99.99% of the time editors just don't bother to fill out. And so to be able to show something, we need to truncate that down. I guess what I'm wondering is in 2023, you know, with AI getting so much buzz, there are solutions that can either auto-generate or allow an editor to sort of manually generate and then validate. Um, to some degree, does that, does that lessen the need for something like Smart Trim to be able to sort of, you know, achieve the same effect within content architectures? Here's a, here's a, 
prime prime use case that that answers your or at least answers your question from my standpoint, right? So I'm thinking about this from my own my own blog's perspective, right? And on my and my, on my blog, uh, Picozzi.com, if you want to check out the five or six posts that are there, um, like I create a post and then I use the summary field because I want a very specific set of text in you know in my in my um, kind of like listing of blogs, right? So your your approach, Martin. Makes sense. I could hit a button, have the AI generate it, and then like just read it and like yes, change a few things. But I still have to give that like effort and time, right? If Smart Trim were there and it wasn't going to just obliterate like what the you know the trim aspects of that, I could say, hey, set Smart Trim to do it and on a word count, and then say, hey, at the end, do three dots, you know, ellipses. And then, you know, do do all this nice stuff that Smart Trim is doing out of the box. And then I don't have to think about it at all. It's just going to happen yeah. because I'm already writing that intro paragraph in the blog post, right? I mean, the, the thing that you're missing, John, uh, and then I'd like to hear what you think about this, Mark. But the thing that you're missing, John, is that Smart Trim is only going to take the first part of the paragraph. So, so if you're curating your teasers, then you already care about your content more than somebody i think just generally using trim anyway because it's just using the first sentence quote or, or two yep. and in martin's ai solution you know solves that problem because it's going to read the whole article then I summarize see. so you're, you guys are talking more about curated teasers as opposed to just yeah. like a, a, a snippet or, or a preview yeah. of the article yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. and to that like i said the summary if the summary is present Smart Trim says, okay, you know, it's a setting. One of the settings is, okay, summary's present. That means somebody thought about it, leave it. That's what they want to have on there. That's what the AI generates. And so, yeah, that does it take the need away? Yes, but if the summary isn't there, then what do you do? That's where the Smart Trim says, oh, okay, well, then let me take over here. So, well, you know. I, I think it's helpful in both cases, though, too, because you can, um, even if you provide a human or AI generated summary, they don't always pay attention to character counts anyway. So you can mm -hmm. use smart trim on that to make sure they're not putting 400 words in there and, and breaking HTML. And, yeah. And that's an option as well saying, okay, it's a summary. However, trim it to the, the character count as well. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you, Martin, as usual, uh, another, uh, great March of the week, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, Nick. See you, Mark. See you. Okay, Mark, let's uh, start with the easy question. Uh, what is the conflict resolution team in Drupal? So the conflict resolution team is a smaller group of the community working group. And what we do is we take, if anybody has any uh, discrepancies with the code of conduct, uh, whether online or any, basically any Drupal space, uh, we me mediate the issue and then come up with a, uh, hopefully a, a solution that makes everybody happy. So I think, I, I mean, I, I think you already might've answered this, but like, why is the conflict resolution team needed? I mean, isn't, isn't open source, like just a happy and like accepting place for everybody. Okay. Um, I don't, no, if you've ever lived in reality, cat there, cowboy. But uh, no, no, it is not. People are people. I mean, and people have differencing opinions on how what is acceptable behavior. You know, uh, you know, it, there, there, there's uh, international issues. You know, uh, you know, and people are just raised differently, and sometimes they rub other people just the wrong way. Say something that they don't mean as something mean, uh, as rude or in, inconsiderate. And then someone takes it and raises it up as an issue and just needs to be told, hey, could you could you not do that? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think the uh, the people are people is is yeah. is where where yeah. I end with that. Right. Like people people are going to be, um, you know, act how they act. I'm interested. You said something interesting there about um, cultural differences. Um, how 
how does the conflict resolution team kind of handle cultural differences? Is it a, is it an education thing or is it more of, um, you know, kind of like a, a, a level setting of, of both sides sort of thing? It's, it's an awareness. Uh, it's kind of like, Hey, I, that's fine for what you're doing. However, in this group, people are going to be offended by that. Could you please not do that? Mm. And then people make the choice to stop doing it or, take their ball and go home. That's really the, 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 right. the, the thing. So, and you know, uh, it's been, and recently someone's had to take their ball and go home uh, because of something that they said that was unacceptable in, in, in the, in the group. So. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned that the conflict resolution team is part of the community working group. So does that mean like everybody on the team is part of the CWG? You have to go to those meetings as well. Yes, we 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 are uh, we're kind of the chairs of the CWG actually because we have access to more things than say the community okay. health team does or just the general uh, you know uh, uh, what are they called uh, subject matter experts that 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 they are you know we have subject matter experts we have the community health team and then we have the conflict resolution team um, so we have to go to all the meetings we have to do the community working group stuff we try, try to or keep that organized as well we also do other things like the air and wind board award uh that is one of our things that we put together um and okay. make make you know do the voting and and control the voting and everything like that not control the voting but you know what i mean so you administer the voting yes exactly um, that's a better way to phrase that so w- when was the conflict resolution team created and you know we don't need to hear the details of the specific incident but i'm, I'm curious if there was an incident that's it, that made people go like hey we need some sort of team to realize this or is it just like the community was growing and like we probably should do this for future i think um, that there 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 was a, a, an issue that said okay we need a, a governing a, or a body to kind of come up with a resolution. Um, I don't know this particular incident and actually, I don't know how long it's been there. It's, it's, there are people that I've known, uh, that apparently have been doing this for a lot longer than I even knew in in, in, in its existence. I, fortunately, I've never had to know that there was a conflict resolution team until I was invited to become part of it. So, uh, I was very happy about that to know that, Oh, wow. Somebody actually is watching and, and taking note as to what's going on out there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been around for, for, for quite a while. I've been on the team, uh, what, two years now. Um, and most people, uh, the people that have been on it has been on for a couple five years. So, um, uh, so I'd say maybe around eight, 10, 10 years. I don't, I don't know that answer directly. So so I, I b- before we move on, I just want to take a moment. We probably should have done this at the top of the show, but um, just to make it you know clear and explicit for our listeners, the conflict resolution team does deal with you know serious issues. A lot of them are private, so we're we're going to be careful to make sure we don't talk about specific things. Just this show is more about the team itself, who makes it up, and and you know what what kinds of things they can help with. Um, not yeah, uh, indiv- not individual or group grievances that the community has had in the past. So. Um, yeah, because a lot of the stuff we deal with is none y'all's business. That's that's to say it, you know. Yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't talking Drupal gossip. It's just talking. Drupal. <laughs> is that TMZ Drupal? <laughs> uh, t- oh, oh. I, I, I can smell the takedown notice now. <laughs> um, so let's set the stage a little bit for folks that are listening, right? So. Conflict resolution team deals with, I would imagine, a broad variety of of issues, um, and I'm just wondering if you can give kind of a high level overview of like what some of those issues, what kinds of issues um, those are. I, I'm assuming that you're you're not dealing with a um, you know a, a code you know, conflict as far as like, oh, you did it this way, but you should do the, do it that way sort of thing, right? Um, you'd be surprised. There are people <laughs> in the issue queue that uh, get heated about their code and we have to go step in there and say, you know, this is great. However, you know, I'm glad you're passionate about it. However, you need to be more respectful of other people, people's opinions out there. Uh, you know, so we deal with 
things in the issue queue. We deal with uh, messages in Slack. We deal with person personal space issues um, at events and everything like that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. any place that there's Drupal, we're kind of like wanting to make sure that people are following the code of conduct. Uh, unless so, so a group says we're not following the Drupal code of conduct, stay away. You know, which no one has done that yet. But if they have, they wanted to, they they have. You know, that's it's their party again. They can take their ball and go home. They just wouldn't be included in any of the the official Drupal uh, community stuff. So, uh, and people work well with us. I mean, it's like you know, for the most part, we ask we we do, again. It's about education, saying hey, you know, that, that it, we're very happy with the stuff you're doing, and we appreciate you appreciate you working on the Drupal project. However, we're a community. Some people will take that the wrong way. Could you please maybe try a different approach? And then that, that seems to be the, the, the way it works, you know, and, uh, but yeah, it's a, a wide range of issues. So. But I, I, I would assume that it's generally in the, it's generally more when something escalates a bit, right? It's not just like somebody does a code review and is a little terse on a, code review and somebody is offended by that, that's usually not the er where you would step in at that point. Like I, I imagine it has to escalate a bit in the issue queue or they have to approach you. Like you're not out there hunting, like people approach you. No, 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 we, right? so the community, the, the way that I always say it is the community health team is the proactive. They're out there saying, here's some stuff that you would want to do. Okay. The conflict resolution team is reactive. You have to come to us and say, uh, that person is saying this, make them stop. Or this person said this, and I have a problem with it. Do something about it. That's the, the the difference. We are definitely reactive. You have to come to us. There is a form. If you go to the uh, the uh, conflict resolution team uh, page on Drupal.org, there's a, a incident report form that you can okay. fill out, um, and that comes to to the the five of us that are on the conflict resolution team, and you know, then then we we discuss it and 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 find out whether or not, you know, send a response back saying, here's what we can do. Send a response to the person saying, Hey, here's what's happening. We make sure everybody knows what's going on. We don't want one person to, you know, be talked behind their back. So we make sure that they're aware that, Hey, someone's saying something, whether or not we even do anything about it. You, you, you got to know that someone's saying something, right? So that's the kind of stuff okay. that we do. You know, you covered a lot of, a lot of types of issues there, right? Both in the issue queue, in, you know, code related issues, but also um, event related issues. So, uh, you know, I think you answered that question perfectly. And, and to be fair, like I never, I never kind of thought like, obviously you're not coming in if somebody's like, oh, I prefer this syntax to that syntax. And they're having a, a, you know, a cordial conversation about it. But like at the point where it gets, you know, past that, like I, you know, I can definitely see you guys coming in. And then, you know, I think the events, the event piece of it is, um, is interesting as well, because I would imagine there are potentially a lot more event related uh, issues that can arise than, than maybe just, you know, uh, with, with on Drupal.org, but, you know, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah, no, I, we we are all people. Things happen, and and again, a lot of times it's you know someone just needs to mediate. Hey, what was said there? What was done there? Was mm -hmm. you know that that it caused an issue? Could we please not do that anymore? And a lot of times it, it, it's it's a good good de escalation. I think is the uh, the thing that I try to try for. I don't want to like punitively cause some some harm but sometimes you have to say okay just go to your corners and not talk to each other please you know so it, it sounds like you guys meet as a group to talk about incidents and and i imagine somebody takes a point on responding to individual incidents and stuff but i'm curious if the conflict resolution team meets outside of it just just in general to uh kind of, I guess, strategize about ways to resolve things or I. So we do meet weekly. Um, oh. And uh, the, the minutes while we're way behind on minutes right now, the minutes to each of those meetings are public. Uh, and uh, we actually have an issue queue on Drupal.org where we publish the minutes and it, it's all on the Google Drive. Uh, they're on, anonymized, of, of course. So, you, you know, we talk about there is an issue and what's being done about it. 
but we don't say specifics about who, what, where, and why. Uh, just that there is an issue that we're discussing. And then we also talk about things like uh, how we want to handle uh, nudges, where we've, we've got a, a, a we've created a group of snippets that say, you know, when things are getting heated in a uh, in in a, a queue, we go in there and say, hey, this is great. However, remember we are all people and we need to be treated as such. Uh, things like that. Uh, and we, you know, then we talk about the Aaron Winborn Award. Uh, we talk about the the, the greater uh, community working groups meetings, the the, the bi monthly meetings uh, that are coming up here in November. If anybody's interested um, to to join uh, the group, also. So, okay. Um, I wonder about. So you're doing. Uh, I may have misheard you. You said you're doing weekly weekly meetings or monthly meetings? Monthly meetings. Well, the conflict resolution team meets once a week. Um, Once a week. And then the community working group on a whole meets uh, every other month. Every other month. Okay. Um, so uh, once a week, um, are, I'm assuming there aren't issues that need to be reviewed once a week, right? Um, so are you, are you um, like if an issue arises, are you calling a special meeting or are you waiting for that weekly, weekly occurrence? We, we have a Slack um, that we discuss, um, you know, uh, openly, you know, it, it's a very private slack. Only the only, only five of us are uh, allowed in there. We do have mm -hmm. some guests in specific, you know, community working group channels, but, uh, sure. for, for the conflict resolution team, we have our slack. Um, and then if something arises, you know, whoever gets the, uh, mail, we, we all get the email from the, uh, the report. Um, and whoever gets it first, we start a document, we say, hey, we received something. Anybody else want to take a look at it? We decide if it needs to be, you know, addressed right away or if we can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, wait on there. So we, we do, you know, it's one of the few slacks that I have on my phone uh, that that I, so I can be aware of what's going on. So, yeah. So it's a, there's a there's a triage process. Yeah. Um, so. <sighs> I would imagine uh, you, you guys are kind of dealing with some some um, in some cases, some heavy stuff, some complicated stuff. Right. Um, some issues that are, come up may be easier than others. Right. But I, I wonder for um, your members, like, how do you how do you guys handle burnout or prevent burnout? Is it you know, uh, is there some sort of, um, you know, leave period that everybody gets or something like that? Um, or is it just kind of, you know, um, there are enough of you where nobody feels like they're, you know, they're, they're burning out. Well, I mean, uh, in theory, according to our charter, you're supposed to roll off after a couple of years, um, okay. where you become a subject matter expert. You're not actually on the team anymore. Um, now the problem with that is we're, we need to recruit more people in mm -hmm. so that we can rotate people off. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, none of the meetings are required. So if people can't make it, then they can't make it there. You know, there are times where there's just been two of us in the meeting discussing what's going on where, and nobody else can make it or will, you know, does. Uh, but the Slack's pretty active at that point. You know, if someone's not there and they have something going on, we ask them in the Slack, Hey, what's going on with that? You know, um, so how to, you know, no one's directly burnt out. I mean, some, a lot of us have stayed on longer than the charter has, has, has uh, put on there because we can deal with it. But I think the, the important thing to all of us, the people, the, the members are that we want to make sure this community thrives. So until we can mm -hmm. pull somebody in to replace us, we can't really just drop everything and go away. So. Right. Right. That makes sense. So, so, so you mentioned earlier that one of the things is you're looking for additional members and, and that's helpful, you know, both for diversity of, you know, skill sets, but also preventing burnout. Um, so if somebody is interested in becoming a member of the conflict resolution team, what, what's the process? I imagine it's not as simple as just saying like, Hey, I'd like to be on the group. Well, I mean, first you join the community working group, uh, community working group, uh, and then you so you work with the community health team for a little while, and then you you do say I'm interested in becoming part of the conflict resolution team. Uh, then we vet you, and then there's a, a process. Of, there is a uh, uh, code of conduct training that we ask everybody to to uh, to, to, uh, to go through. 
Um, and then, uh, then you just, we kind of bring you in on the meetings um, and, and see how, how it works. But yeah, first you join the community working group as a whole. Um, and then you get pulled into the conflict resolution team um, based on that. So when, if you want to, again, you want to join the conflict or uh, the community working group meeting coming up in November, we actually just sent out a doodle. I don't think the finalized dates there, uh, but we'll, we'll announce when that is. And also like in, uh, whenever I do something at, uh, uh, you know, DrupalCon or something, we do a birds of a feather, which is like an open office for the community working group. And we try to recruit people into the community working group because we need that help as well. Um, so if, you know, come on in, you know, we, we all want to make this a better place. Uh, you know, like they always say, come for the code, stay for the community. We want to make sure that community is worth staying for. So Mark, let's talk about you for a second here. Right. Um, I'm curious as to, you know, why are you a member of the con conflict resolution team? And, and, in answering that, if you could talk a little bit about your path to the conflict resolution team, I think that would be that would be helpful. Um, you know, I I think that I've been wanting this community to grow for a very very long time. It's very important to me. This is, a, I mean, you know, I work at home, and sure, I have a band and I have uh, friends that I play hockey with, but literally, these are the people that I spend my days with, and I want them all to be uh be as happy as possible and not to be have any issues uh don't like the infighting um and then there are other uh incidents that kind of made me think well i kind of want to make sure that there are some rules in place for so things don't happen again uh you know uh but then i started working with the community working group for a little bit and then someone told me about the conflict resolution team and asked if i was interested so I said, yeah, sure, I could probably do that. And I feel fortunate that they thought that, that I was good enough that I could actually be part of this and that I could keep, you know, keep myself together and, and uh, show that I am impartial and, and not playing favorites and stuff like that. So uh, and that's how I became on there. It's been a, about a year and a half now for me. So. OK. I think we do try to let people know about the conflict resolution team, but not everybody might know about it. If somebody does have an issue or they think that they might need um, intervention by the conflict resolution team, how do they submit an issue? How do they so, let you guys know? Yeah, we have a we have a Google form on um, on, on on the Drupal.org page for the conflict resolution team. Actually, for the community working group, there is a, a big button that says report an issue. Uh, pretty much on every page if you want to report an issue. Uh, and then it goes to a Google form and that, that gets sent to us. So it's on, you know, the conflict resolution teams page itself on Drupal.org and also the uh, community working group on a holes page uh, on Drupal.org. So head there okay. and let us know. You can also reach out to us in uh, Drupal Slack. Uh, there is a community working group uh, thing there where, where you know, obviously don't give details because you want to keep that private. Uh, but you say, hey, where do I, where, what do I do? Um, and then we'll send you, shoot you to, to the form itself. Okay. And, and um, I don't know if you can share this, but how, how many, how many issues get submitted a week? Is it like a couple a week, a couple like valid months, issues? Right? Uh, like every other week, we'll get we'll get something that we actually have to review, uh, whether or not we actually have to act on it, or you know, there there like I said, there are some that is just like you know, they won't accept my code. Well, it's their module; they don't have to. It's not you know. Sometimes we actually have to tell the reporter that they're the ones that are causing the conflict, not the person that they're reporting. So okay. you know, that that's fortunately a lot. A lot hmm. lower than than I expected, but um, yeah, yeah. The and you know major issues, you know, have been very few, fortunately. Um, yeah. So I'm always uh, happy that I when when I go through a, like a DrupalCon or a camp and I don't have to deal with anything at the afterwards, and and very rarely have I had to. So it's good to. I wonder. You just mentioned like sometimes you have to tell the submitter right that they're that they're the one causing the conflict like 
How does that conversation usually go? Is it like, hey, listen, you're the problem here? Like, no, obviously right? we don't say that. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it, it's like, look, there's there's really nothing that we see here. We're sorry that this is not going your way. However, it's just there's nothing to do at that point. You right. Know? It, 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 and we actually, I mean, one of the things that we do, we work real well together. We write a draft and then each one of us review it and, and say, well, you may not want to put it that way because, you know, that yeah. might imply something else. So uh, it's all we we check ourselves each time that we go through it. So. Hmm. It makes sense. So I'm wondering, what do you what do you think the hardest or most complex issue the conflict resolution team has had to help resolve is, at least in your in your tenure, I guess? I uh, that would me going into that would give too much away, unfortunately. Uh, there's one there's an issue that's been going on for the entirety of my duration on the conflict resolution team where we just can't get people to together. And, you know, it's in the, it's in the agenda, but uh, you know, and it's in the agenda every week for the entirety that I've been there. Um, And we just can't get the, 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 some people to see eye to eye or even ear to ear or anything. So and that and that's the thing where you, you, there is no there, it's such a big gray area in this issue that you can't really say stop stop you you don't know you know and then once we think yeah. we have a nice medium thing something goes off the rails anyway so uh, hmm. it, it, it's stuff like that there's uh, the there are some cut and dry ones that 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 we've had to do that have been very easy and those are easy done in a week you know and yep. and we enjoy those because it's like, well, yep, stop that, you know. Uh, yeah. But the the ones that have this huge gray area that, that they're just hard to resolve, and that's the conflict resolution team. We're having a hard time resolving things, and that's where it gets difficult. Now, now when you have like a, an issue like that, and you know, uh, aware that you know we're we're trying to be vague here, but like. When you have an issue like that, the the makeup of the team, um, are there usually folks that take take either side, right? So to, to to provide kind of that balance and that to say like, well, there's a little bit of a gray area here because I I agree with this person and you might agree with that person, and like now we have to you know internally we kind of have to debate it and bat it back and forth, you know, to get to a to to get to a compromise or a resolution. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that uh, we have a group of people that work well together, uh, where we can actually disagree and then talk about it civilly. Unlike the people that are we're trying to mediate, right. you could take um, you could take the charge out of it or the energy out of it a little correct, bit. They like, okay, like here's my point of view. What's your point of view? Okay, like how do we? And I feel like that's that that's important, right? To be able to take the energy out of it and and. And also to add a little bit of of intent there, right? Because sometimes, uh, you know, I imagine you guys deal with this a lot, where you know somebody's intent is not to not to hurt or not to not to be offensive or not to do whatever the the action is that has brought it to your attention. But you know, uh, sometimes intent goes um, unrealized, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's a lot of times it's just like, did you realize? And there are people that, you know, we brought an issue to their attention and they said, oh, man, sorry. And that, you know, that's all really all right. that, you know, and then they don't do it again. Now there are people that have said, oh, man, sorry. And then completely did the same thing again. And then. Yeah. Right. Like then, you did it yeah. once. That's an accident. You did it twice. It yeah. could be an accident, but it's probably not, right? Right, 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 right. I wonder, just going back to the kind of the issue, you know, where you kind of, you know, there's a big gray area and, and you know, people are, or or sides or however you want to phrase it, right, are, are not um, coming to a resolution, right? I, I imagine that, like, sometimes with with these issues there has to be 
Um, do you feel like there has to be a, 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 an amount of compromise from both sides or an amount of understanding from both sides in order to get to a resolution? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's okay. that's the whole point. There, There is, right. you know, you have two walls in the middle of this gray area. Neither one is giving each way. And that's where the conflict arises, um, right. where you, you got to spread. I mean, if it was a big gray area and both of them realized that, uh, then that would be great. There would be, oh, I see what you're saying there. Let's try this. And as opposed to, no, you're wrong. So. I, I'm curious if any of these issues ever, like, do you ever, I don't know if escalates the right word or maybe involve or include the DA or the board uh, with any of these things? Or are you kind of just completely autonomous and we we uh, we are completely autonomous from the uh, DA. Um, the community working group is not at all involved with the DA. However, we work with the Drupal Association because it is the Drupal Association. They are part of the community, so we do work with them in, in that those kind of issues when they need to get involved. I mean, DrupalCon they actually have their own code of conduct and all they have their own conflict team and their own reporting thing. However, hmm. that tends to come to us first. And then we have to work with the Drupal association to on how they're going to resolve it and how we're going to resolve it and what needs to be done at that point. Make, makes sense. And since, since they're the ones putting on that event, it's, I think it's the same thing for camps, right? We would, yeah. if, if there was an issue at, you know, Ned camp, we would reach out to you guys as well, but we would also be kind of point. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have your own, uh, like every camp has their own uh, uh, community working group or community person. Um, and then if they need more assistance, and we we actually want to be more of a, a, of a resource where, you know, you guys, you would, you all would come to us and we would say, well, here's how we we would approach this. And then you decide whether or not to approach it that way or not. Um, so we don't we we don't want to be judge jury or executor not we don't want to be any of them we just want to help mediate this situation and 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 make the community happy judge jury or resolver yeah, yeah um, resolver that's better than executor i guess yeah um so i'm wondering uh, because you're you know in some instances you're working with the da you are fully autonomous which is good but like are there tools that the da is providing you know to help you come to resolutions on issues or um, I know that, that you guys developed to have developed kind of like communication templates and things like that to, to help folks. Um, I'm wondering if that flows downhill or if you guys are bubbling that stuff up. Oh, it's, it's kind of, we're bubbling that stuff up. We get assistance with mm -hmm. the DA on Drupal.org. You know, they give us access to stuff on Drupal.org and that's sure. pretty much, and then access to kind of the, behind the curtain stuff for, for the events and, and, and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, we try to bubble our stuff. We're, we're trying to push everything up, up higher uh, so that they can actually use what we, what we, do, we we're we making out of that. Does the conflict resolution team need help? And I know you've said that you're looking for new people to join, but it, I think there's two parts to this question. One is, do you need help? Do you need people to join? But is there ways people can help without being you know, part of the mediation process? Is there anything that people can do to help there? Well, not really. Since since they're all they're, they're sensitive issues, we can't really let anybody in on them without them being part of the team. Uh, so we don't really, we can't really say, hey, you know, how, how would you resolve this problem with these two people that they don't want anybody to know about? You know, we kind of have to keep it, it kind of yeah. uh, our cards close to our chest, you know, in, in that uh, yeah, but you know, uh, be be good, be good to each other. That's how you can help. <laughs> that that's good. But uh, to clarify, I meant things like you mentioned you're behind on meeting minutes and stuff. Like you know, could somebody post those for you or those things? Or do you have to, not you have to anonymize them before posting? Or is it correct? Right? We have or, to anonymize them, and that's how that's pretty much what the backlog is uh, uh, anonymizing the, the the things and got getting it. getting so, them done that way. So. So double down to double down on that question, right? If if somebody is, uh, you know, you said you're looking for members, um, and somebody is gonna gonna you know reach out, wants to become a member, uh, are there certain skills that you guys need 
on the conflict resolution team? Like, um, are you looking for, um, you know, folks that may have like, uh, some sort of, um, counseling background or some, some, some sort of, you know, legal background or anything like that? No, I mean, we don't really, I, uh, fortunately we've not had to get a lawyer involved. Um, in anything that I've worked with. Uh, so we don't, haven't really had to deal with anything like that. I don't, you know, just a level head is really all we're looking for, uh, which is of course hard to define and everybody thinks they have one until they don't. And that's, that's <laughs> the, 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 the issue there. But, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for people that are willing to promote this community and make this community better. And that's really what, what we're looking for. People that are in it for the community not in it for themselves, obviously. I mean, we can't, we're, I'm certainly not gaining anything by being on this team other than promoting the, the community that I want to be up there. All right. So this kind of dovetails into my next question and it's around training and certifications, right? So you'd already, you already said that members of the conflict resolution team go through the code of conduct training, um, which if listeners haven't done the code of conduct training. It is, um, it is a great training to, uh, to go through. It's, um, publicly available. You don't have to be, um, a, uh, uh, conflict resolution team member specifically. Um, I think, you know, uh, Nick was talking about NedCamp, you know, uh, Stephen and I on the NedCamp team and Leslie have all gone through the um, con uh, conduct, uh, code of conduct training. Um, and, you know, it's, it's definitely very helpful. I'm wondering, though, if there are other trainings or certifications that are, are needed specifically to be on the conflict resolution team. No, that's the, that that is literally the only one that we require. Um, right. code of conduct training, um, because I mean, there are so many different things that you have to deal with that, you know, that's the one that matters to us that, that you understand the, what a code of conduct is and how to mediate it basically. I guess one of the things that I'm curious about is I imagine you're, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but I imagine generally too, you're just dealing with mediating between just a couple of people, maybe three people at most, right? Do you find that you're actually having to mediate between multiple people um, or groups? No, not, I mean, usually it's definitely an A-B issue, you know, where one person okay. has issue with another person and we have to mediate that. There hasn't been, you know, a whole bunch of people. And, you know, uh, there, there have been issues where a, a lot of people have, have reported the same person um okay. having the same issue and that but that's really easy because we that is a lot of cases where we take it to that person and say see what you did here you know and then that at that point we're not we're we, we don't even we just respond saying thank you for the 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 uh uh the 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 notification yeah and then the changes come come to light and then we say that it's resolved or, or whatnot so I mean, if if it's cut and dry, and you know, one side is is obviously the 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 one introducing the conflict. You mentioned that something about the community, but if they decide not to make a change, does that mean like you ban them to, from events and from Drupal.org? Or but there you know, there what? there have been instances where people have been asked not to participate in the project anymore. You know, oh, so. Okay. You know, we, 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 it, it has gotten, that was before my time, but it has gotten to that point where people that uh, have been said they just cannot attend um, any camps, uh, okay. you know, and we actually go, you know, in their communities, we'll actually say, hey, this person's not welcomed in the Drupal community anymore, which is a hard thing to say because you want everybody to be yeah. welcomed. But there are some people that just... They're not, can't, community, they're, they're you not know? community members. Yeah. I, I imagine that's extremely rare, but it was just very, very, very rare. Um, like so, I, I, I can't even count more than on one hand. So, but yeah. Question but about that. Right. So is there an instance where somebody has been asked not to go to community events, right? 
and uh, an event that is a Drupal event that does have that does follow Drupal's code of conduct, right? Says no, we're not going to exclude anybody from our event. Like it's their event. We can't like we're not we're you know there's nothing we can do. Uh, right, you're not bouncers. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're 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 not uh, police officers. We're not anything like that. If and no one has done that before. Uh, they right. they've all respected what you know because they want the community their community to grow. Um, you know, I, but yep, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, it it could, could easily someone could easily say, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, or that person can say, no, I'm going to continue. Uh, you know, yeah. I have this great thing that I want to get off my mind, and that's the place I'm going to do it. You yeah. know, I I think I think that it's. Um... The fact that it's so rare and the fact that that has never happened to like the, the nobody's refused just kind of points to the fact that both the Drupal community is good. Generally, people want to be part of the community. You know, like you said, come for the code, save the community. That's that's more than just a, a cliche saying. Right. And if somebody realizes they're not being, you know, the best community member, most people will just um, modify, modify their behavior. Um, yeah. And, you know, the people that put on camps and put the effort into the camps, they want to foster that sense of community. And if there's somebody who's, you know, not, you know, following the guidelines of the community, you know, they don't want that at their event because they want to foster community and the people that are there. Um, so I, I think I think that reflects well in the community, the fact that, like I said, it's it's both rare um, and it. I mean, each each camp, I think, has its own general code of conduct, but they're very, very close. I mean, the community yeah, as absolutely. a whole does generally agree on the vast majority of things. Yeah, pretty much every every camp that I've seen that I've been to has their own code of conduct. But the, one of the first things it says is it's based on the Drupal code of conduct which is based on multiple other code of conducts as well. We just actually, we just went through the process of rewriting the code of conduct last year. Um, so that we, we make sure it's more inclusive and more defined as well. So. Yeah. Makes sense. Very simply just be a good person. Yeah. I mean, be nice to each other and understand that other people may not, you know, and I'm actually, the, the interesting thing is I, um, I tend to speak my mind without thinking of consequence a lot. Um, I can get behind and, that. I also subscribe to that. And so uh, there are many times where I'm like, I say something and I realize ah, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud and then have to kind of like say, sorry, if I've offended you, you know, but think about that, you know, think that there, there are going to be consequences to your actions on people who may not appreciate your sense of dry humor. So, yeah. And, and you, in the other, or give them a podcast. Is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the other side of that too is, you know, just thinking about that empathy side and thinking about that is you you also have to remember not everybody's going to speak up. Not everybody's going to know about the conflict resolution team. So, you know, mm -hmm. you do like, yeah, sometimes people say something you're like, Ooh, that maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it's, but you need to, you need to reflect on that kind of stuff and make sure that you're addressing that yourself uh, as well. So that, you know, it's inclusive for everybody. Yeah, and I'd like to say I'd rather have you come come to me with a non-issue than decide to leave the community. You know, yeah. if something's bothering you and then we can talk it out, um, mm -hmm. I'd rather have you do that than you not participate in this group, uh, no matter who you are. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, a lot of times, if I had to guess, a lot of times these these misunderstandings are are hopefully they're e easily resolved, right? It's, it's, oh, you know what? I didn't realize that that was, I didn't realize how that was going to be taken. You know, I apologize or, oh, you know what? I will, I will change my actions and, and I will, you know, I, I will strive to be better. Cause I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're all, we're all trying to do our best. And, and my, what I've seen from the Drupal community, right. Is that we're not, um, you know, we're not, trying you know we're not overly opinionated we're not trying to um make it uninclusive quite the opposite right we want to right. be inclusive. 
solve. So, you know, yeah. and if, if people aren't speaking up and saying things like we can't, we can't improve our inclusivity and we can't, you know, rectify problems when they arise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, that's what we, you know, obviously we're all trying to make good software. Uh, we're all trying to do well, but we also want to be good to get each other. And that's what I like about the community. So, Absolutely. Before we close, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you'd like to bring up? Uh, you know, not, not that I can think about, uh, not, nothing I can think of uh, for, uh, as far as conflict resolution team or anything else. Uh, in general, because I could talk for hours Either. on uh, <laughs> trying to yeah trying to learn my stand up bass, which I still haven't done. So uh, I, I've been I've been meaning to ask about that. If that was a stand up bass or a cello, but you just, yeah, you it's just a stand up bass. I just got it uh, a while ago. I just got it repaired, and I'm trying to learn it. Uh, fretless basses are new to me, and that one's definitely fret. It, mm -hmm. It's really cool because you have to actually hear the note. You can't have a specific fret that you know that's going to be the right note you actually have to hear it so it, it's been a lot of fun yeah. to, to to play i think I, I so i don't know if you know this but i used to play the trombone when i was when i was younger and i, I wonder if it's kind of similar because you kind of had the whole slide i mean you there, there's fewer positions right with the stand-up bass you have the whole neck and then you have multiple strings so there's definitely more con, uh, combinations that you can do yeah but and in the trombone, you only have seven positions, so it's a little bit easier. But yeah, you you kind of have the same thing. Like it's not a defined like push this button, and right. you get this note. Especially, I'm I mean, trying to and, figure uh, out. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how Mark or I would know that he, as a child you played the trombone. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show before. <laughs> this is episode four hundred twenty-three. <laughs> oh, uh, I remember way back when when you were playing trombone and the, yeah, the what, you know, and the, there's a huge difference between you know something fretted where you have an actual position, you know, mm -hmm. like a trumpet, you actually have keys as well, where you actually play the yeah. piano, you have specific keys that that's going to be that note. With something like this, or with a trombone, or with a violin, you have to hear the notes, and that's. Uh, that's completely different. So, Absolutely. and then also come here. I, mean, I want everybody to say hi to my dog, Drew, since, you know, this is going to be my last time on the show for a while. Hopefully this is Drew. Hi, Drew. She's my pal. <laughs> so hey. very excited. So, but yeah, thanks for having me on the show these last couple of weeks. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for working with me while I was in. Uh, okay. Uh, that's enough for you. Thank, thanks for working with me while I'm while, while we were in uh, Europe and everything. So, no worries. Yeah, Mark, thank you for joining us for the last four weeks. It's been been a huge pleasure having you on. Yeah, anytime you want me back, please let me know. Do you have questions or feedback? Reach out to Talking Drupal on X with the handle Talking Drupal or by email with show at talkingdrupal.com. You can connect with our hosts and other listeners on the Drupal Slack in the Talking Drupal channel. And you can promote your Drupal community event on Talking Drupal. Learn more at TalkingDrupal.com slash TD promo. Get the Talking Drupal newsletter to learn more about our great our great guest hosts, um, show news, upcoming Drupal camps, local meetups, and much more. Sign up for the newsletter at TalkingDrupal.com slash newsletter. Thank you, patrons, for supporting Talking Drupal. Your support is greatly appreciated. You can learn more about becoming a patron at TalkingDrupal.com and choosing the Become a Patron button. Well, Mark, as we close out, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, I am Marky on the Drupal Slack, M-A-R-K-I-E on Drupal Slack. I'm also there on Drupal.org. I'm Drunken Drupal on Twitter. I refuse to call it X, so I'm only going to call it Twitter. And uh, Or Team Poop is my other Twitter handle as well. So those are the, the main ways to get a hold of me. And John, how about you? <laughs> I'm John Picozzi, uh, Solutions Architect at EPAM, and you can find me on all the major social networks at John Picozzi as well as Drupal.org. And then you can find out more about EPAM at epam.com. And you can find me pretty much everywhere at N-I-C-X-V-A-N. And, and thanks, everybody. If you've enjoyed listening, we've enjoyed talking. Thanks for playing. See you guys next week. Thanks, everyone.